Hello everyone and welcome to another review video. If you like this content and want to see more about books and movies that are not generally well known but should be, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a single instance when a video is uploaded. In this video, we're continuing with our review of the second foundation novel, which is the third in the foundation trilogy by Isaac Asimov. And this is part two, Search by the Foundation. And the story takes place 60 years after the events in the first part and about 55 years years after the mule died. So let's get right into it. Part 2, Search by the Foundation. The first chapter is called Arcadia. It is the seventh chapter overall. The story takes place in Terminus and it follows Arcadia Durrell who is at this point in time 14 years old and she will one day become a famous writer known as Akari Durrell. But at this point in time, she's in her room and she is doing a paper for class, a paper called The Future of Sheldon's Plan. She is interrupted by a man at her window. And after a few minutes of bantering with him, she let him in because she realizes that he is the man that her father was waiting for, although her father did not tell her that. And that man's name is Peleus Anthor. Her father, Turan Durrell, was expecting him, and after chastising his daughter just a little, he took him to the room that he prepared for him. The next chapter is called Sheldon's Plan, and it takes place in the office of the first speaker of the Second Foundation. He is the twelfth person to hold that office, and his predecessor was the one that defeated the mule. He's meeting with a student who has the potential to one day become a speaker himself. He discusses with the student the Sheldon Plan, and he informs him that each speaker, before he becomes speaker, must contribute something to the plan. And while it may take months or years for what he contributed to be verified, the first speaker tells him that his contribution to the plan is the knowledge that one day, about 400 years from now, when the Second Empire is just being formed, rival personalities will threaten to tear it apart and his solution to that upcoming problem. He discusses with the student that the true Sheldon plan is to not only bring forth a second galactic empire but to also bring forth a more stable galactic empire and the only way to do that is to have mentalities that are able to lead that new empire but this must be kept secret because people will resent being ruled by mentalists. He tells the student that the mule bent the plan to the breaking point, but it did not break. But in order to defeat the mule, they had to reveal themselves and also reveal their power. And now the first foundation knows that they exist and the power they have. And so the plan now only has a 24% chance of success. So they must now work on that. The next chapter is called the conspirators. After a few weeks of entertaining Peleus and Thor, five men met in Dr. Darrell's living room. Unbeknown to them, Arcadia has the living room wired so she could hear what's going on. The five men were Dr. Darrell, Peleus and Thor, Joel Tuber, Elvid Semek, and Homer Munn. Before getting on to business, Phileas insisted that everyone in the house, including Arcadia, had their minds scanned 
to ensure that they were not under the influence of the second foundation. It seems that Phyllis's mentor, who, while working with Dr. Darrell, had come up with a way to scan the brains of humans and find out if their minds were under the influence of someone else. After everyone was cleared, they got down to business. It turns out that they believe that the second foundation is still controlling things in the first foundation behind the scenes. And they're trying to come up with a way to stop them. They feel they can't go to the government of the first foundation because they may be under the influence. So they decide to send Mon out to Calgan to do a little bit of investigation in the former palace of the mule hoping to find information on where the second foundation is located the next chapter is called approaching crisis back in the second foundation in the office of the first speaker the student has been studying the upcoming crisis it seems that the problem is twofold first the people of the first foundation the majority no longer try and are no longer active participants of the plan because now that they know that the second foundation exists and will step in to protect the plan they feel they no longer have to try but a minority of those citizens we act with hostility and will want to kill and destroy the second foundation. So any solution to the crisis must handle both things at once. It seems that a solution to the crisis have been in planning stage for a decade and it will come to fruition within a year and they will find out at that time whether it worked or whether the second foundation will be destroyed. The next chapter is called Story. A month later, Homer Mann took his vacation and he took it on Calgan and it was part of his cover so that he can get to Calgan and examine the mule's palace. He left for Calgan on his ship, the Unimera, but unknown to him, Acadia stowed away on his ship. She left a message for her father telling her what she's going to do and then hid on his ship. And when the ship was well away, she revealed herself to him. Peleus, who was with her father back on Terminus, was very upset about this. But her father told him that, that there's not much they can do because if they make them come back, it would look suspicious. So when Mon found her on his ship and he confronted her, she told him that she knew why he was going to Calgan and that she could help him and it was too late for them to go back now that it would look suspicious. So for a week, they traveled to Calgan and he was glad to have her company because it eased his nervousness. Finally, they were one night away from Calgan. The next chapter is called Lord. On Calgan, the current Lord is Lord Stettin and he's been Lord for five months. He is currently in his private apartments with his first minister, Lev Merus, and his mistress, Lady Kalia. He feels it is time to attack the First Foundation while his First Minister is urging caution. He feels now is the time now that the First Foundation is weak. His First Minister asked him about the Second Foundation and he's not sure that the Second Foundation exists. He knows that Mon has been on his planet Calgan and that he's from the Foundation. He knows that Mon wants to visit the mule's palace so he plans to use that as an opportunity to speak to mon and lady kalia also wants to speak to acadia 
The next chapter is called Lady. Arcadia is having the time of her life on Calgan, and she finally gets to see Lady Kalia. And in their discussion, Lady Kalia asks her, why does Mon want to see the palace of the mule? Because it is supposed to be cursed that the mule put a curse on it when he, just before he died, ordered that no one was to enter it until the Second Galactic Empire was established. So Arcadia tells her that Mon believes that the Sheldon plan is broken and that the Second Foundation were able to stab the mule because he was premature. But now they may be supporting Kalgan since Kalgan has the best chance of creating a new empire. Arcadia also says that Mon believes that there may be proof of this in the mule's palace. Once Arcadia leaves, Lady Kalia goes to Lord Stettin and tells him what Arcadia told her. And that had the effect of two things. One, Lord Stanton then orders 500 ships to go on war games and second he allowed Mon to visit the palace of the mule. The next chapter is called Anxiety. It begins on Terminus with Dr. Durrell. The mayor has asked Dr. Durrell to be the administrator of research and development, and he has said yes because he doesn't want any suspicion to fall upon him. It turns out that Dr. Durrell is working in his own secret project. He's working in a machine that he hopes will help him be able to detect the difference between a second foundationer from a regular human. We now go to Calgon, where Homer Mann is in the executive office with Lord Stanton, and Arcadia is in the front office. Lord Stanton is preparing to attack the First Foundation, and he's questioning Mann as to what he can expect. At the end of the questioning, he asks Mann how old Arcadia was. He also asks if she's a permanent Foundation family. At this point, Lady Kalia comes to Arcadia and helps her escape, telling her to go back home to the Foundation and warn them that war is coming. But Arcadia sees something in Lady Kalia's eyes that let her realize that Lady Kalia is a member of the Second Foundation. Arcadia now doesn't feel she can go back to the Foundation because she may lead others into the hands of the Second Foundation because she thinks she knows where the Second Foundation is located. The next chapter is called Through the Grid. Arcadia is on the spaceport on Calgan. She figures she can't go back to Terminus, so she buys a ticket to Trento, the planet she was born on. She literally runs in to a pair of farmers from Trento, Prem Palver and his wife. When Lord Stutton placed the spaceport on lockdown and began searching for her, Prem Palver and his wife protect her by claiming that she is their niece. So she gets on the ship with them and heads to Trento. The next chapter is called Beginning of War. Dr. Darrell is working with Simic to get parts to build his device that will allow him to discover the second foundation. While they are doing that, Anthor comes and Dr. Darrell tells Simic to keep everything secret. Anthor brings news about Arcadia, that she escaped from Calgan and is on her way to Tranthor, and that she was allowed to escape from Calgan. He asks Dr. Darrell if he will go to Tranthor to be with his daughter, but Dr. Darrell said no, because he thinks that's what the Second Foundation wants him to do. By the end of the discussion, they discover that Calgan has attacked the Foundation. And once again, Antha asks Dr. Darrell if he'll go to Trenta to be with his daughter. 
but the doctor said he's gonna risk staying here. The next chapter is called War. Dr. Davil is with the mayor of the foundation and the mayor shows him that the forces of Calgan completely surround the foundation and the foundation probably will lose. Dr. Darrell assures the mayor that he's confident that they will win, although to himself he expressed doubts. Meanwhile, at the same time, Lord Stettin, who is still head of Calgon, is pleased with the progress that his forces have made. He have basically imposed a embargo around the foundation although his first minister is telling him he should attack now while he has the chance, but he prefers to wait and to get them more demoralized. The next chapter is called Ghost of a World. Arcadia is on Tranter living with Prem Palfer and his wife, and she's been there for three months. They get news that war has broken out between Calgan and the Foundation, and that it's not going well for the Foundation. They have been pushed back to the borders of the original four kingdoms. She convinces Prem Palfer that trading with the Foundation would make him a lot of money, especially during these times of war. And when he agreed and he's getting ready to go, she gave him her address on Terminus and told him to look up her father uh, to let him know that she's okay. And she gave him a message to give to her father, which she said he would understand. She, of course, is a bit worried that she may have put the nice couple that's taking care of her in danger. The next chapter is called End of War. Joel Tudor is on the foundation flagship of the third fleet and he's just finished interviewing a sailor when he finds out that Prem Palfer was captured and is being held. And he remembers Prem Palfer because he knows that that's the person that Arcadia is with. He asks the Admiral to let him speak to Prem Palfer, which the Admiral agrees. He then confirms with Prem that Arcadia is well and that she will be returned once the war is over. The Admiral agrees to release Prem Palfer, but he says that won't happen until after this current battle is over. This battle between the Foundation and Calgan is to be called the Battle of Kuristan. The Foundation won a complete victory in this battle. Of the 300 Calgan ships, only 60 survived. And of the 125 Foundation ships, they only lost eight. Lord Stettin's first minister convinces him that he should sue for peace and he releases Homer Munn and gave him a peace treaty to take to the foundation. The next chapter is called I Know. With the end of the war, Lord Stettin remained in office, but he lost his military. His military was dismantled. And the systems that Calgan once controlled outside of its home system were allowed to either stay with Calgan, go independent, or join the foundation. Dr. Darrell meets with the same four men that he met with before the war began. And this time he tells them that he has come up with a device that can protect against the intrusion of mines like the mule or the second foundation. And they have placed them around all of the most important buildings. So while Anthor was trying to convince them that the second foundation is actually on Calgan, Dr. Durrell tells them no, he knows where the second foundation is. The next chapter is called The Answer That Satisfies. Dr. Darrell explains that Arcadia 
this message gave him the knowledge where the second foundation was located. She told him that a circle has no end, and that means that the second foundation is located on terminus. He then reveals that his mind static device can bring pain to people with mental power such as the mule or members of the second foundation. Dr. Darrell turns on the device and Peleus Anthor drops in pain. They question him and he admits that he's a member of the second foundation. He also admits that they are located on Terminus and he admits that Lady Kalia is a member of the second foundation. He also says that there's only 50 members of the second foundation in existence. When Akalia got home, Dr. Darrell tested her to make sure that she was not tampered with. And that's when he was sure that they had gotten the second foundation. The next chapter is called The Answer That Was True. The first speaker is once again speaking to the student. And he explains that the 50 members of the second foundation knew that the end would either be their death or or their permanent imprisonment, but they did it willingly. He explains that they caused the war between Calgan and the Foundation so that it would end with a Foundation victory that will bolster their confidence. He also explained that they allowed the Second Foundation to be found on Terminus so that when it is destroyed, the First Foundation would once again believe that their faith was in their hands and now the second foundation is once again free to continue protecting the sheldon plan and in the very last sentence of the book we find out that preen palver is the first speaker of the second foundation and the book ends with the knowledge that the second foundation is really located on trento this is one of the greatest science fiction series of all time. And the interesting thing is, one of the only time that a space battle is described in this entire series is in the second half of this book, The Second Foundation. I highly recommend reading this series if you haven't already, because it is filled with nuances that just cannot be told that you should read. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you in the next video.